maze of people going past me. Um, this does not sound right. Too loud? No, it's good. It's, it's, it's reverberating, right? Right, 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 right. You sound very impressive. Okay. Well, as as they said, um, last year I retired from, from this large company down the road. Um, yeah, it took a few years. Sorry. And um, the, the idea of my talk is if you have the time and the resources um, and you have the opportunity, what would you choose to do? And I recognize that everybody's in a different age situation, financial situation, finan uh, family situation. But in, in, in everybody has um, unique skills and have choices to make about what they do with them. So I'm going to just tell you uh, my story. And hopefully parts of that story will resonate with the people here. Now, uh, my story is, is about as boring and conventional as it can get. Uh, hopefully it'll make it more interesting as we go along. Moved here about 33 years ago with our first of three children. We raised them, we did all our usual stuff, supported each other in our careers, my wife Ricky and I. Who you'll hear in the number seven spot. Uh, so, um, my first toe in the water, if you will, uh, breaking out of the bubble of living in a suburban Glenville and working in the palace up on the hill in Niskayuna, uh, was when um, I went with a father-daughter group to something called the Concern for the Hungry Thanksgiving Food Drive. Uh, they used to happen in the IUE Mall. There'd be hundreds of people pulling wagons with a box on it. You go past the mountain of food, they put some food in the box, and when the box was all filled up, ostensibly it was being piled up and handed out to people who's going to need a box of food for Thanksgiving. File that information away. I'll come back to me soon. Uh, meanwhile, my career G went, went fine. It was very interesting. I want, I want to say that I, I love the work that I did, I love the people that I, that I worked with. But um, as time went on, I got uh, very interested in things other than GE. And probably this, a, a singular event was when I got invited to be part of the group that goes out in the summertime to help with a group called Summer Lunch. Now, a lot of people don't know that um, kids in Schenectady schools, the poverty rate is so high that rather than to say, well, these kids will get a reduced lunch and these kids will not, uh, but basically the school says everyone's just going to get a reduced lunch. It's just easier administratively. Well, what happens in the summer when they're not in school? So there's a summer lunch program. There's about 14 sites around the city, and people descend out of their various office buildings and churches and schools at lunchtime, and they help to give out the food. Now, this was the first time that I kind of broke out of the bubble, my protective bubble, I was in the neighborhood, and it occurred to me that um, I wasn't doing anything special. I was just putting a sandwich in a bag and handing it out to a kid, maybe giving out some crayons and coloring paper. But the point was that these kids were getting lunch at this site. If the kids were getting lunch at the site, they weren't getting lunch. And I don't think my kids ever, ever need, they needed a lot of stuff, but they never needed food. And that started getting into my head that, you know, there's a problem here. Well, my daughter Carly is here. I won't embarrass her by making her raise her hand. But she's responsible for the next part of the story. In 2003, we went to another Concern for the Hungry event. And I, now this is a warning to everybody in the audience, do this or don't do this at your own risk. At that Concern for the Hungry event, I stopped one of the people who was an organizer and I said, tell me about you guys. I said, well, you can come to one of our meetings. Remember, don't do this. I'm warning you, don't do this. So I went to one of the meetings. Someone said, hey, our secretary just resigned. Can you take, can you take notes? I can take notes. I have a pen. I have a pen. Can you type them up and send them out? Yeah, I didn't know how to do that. Would you come to the next meeting? I'm telling you. I'm warning you. Don't, don't do it. Okay. All right. Now I want to give you two stories. All right. The first story is now we're going to go forward. And, I, I joined the board and I'm on the board of Conservative Hungry. So several years later, it's the Thanksgiving food drive. Now, the Thanksgiving Food Drive, we feed 2,700 families. That's a pretty big organization. And so we're always looking for cheap turkeys and someone to give us food for free. And a farm out in Schoharie Valley said, hey, we've got all the potatoes you can use. We'll deliver them for you if you can separate them out. It's like, great. So these gigantic boxes, like from here to the front row, this big giant box came in a forklift and they dumped it in the middle of the gym floor. And basically what they do to harvest the, the potatoes is they use a, a front end loader and they just dig up the whole field, dirt and all. And the potatoes are in there. 
but you gotta get them out. There's 2,700 families. There's a pile of dirt with potatoes in it. And, and me and a bunch of the volunteers sat on the floor in the dirt, and we separated out two pound bags 2,700 times of potatoes. It was the most fun I've ever had in my life. Now, here's the story of GE. I'm a GE. And we have an opportunity to work with the mining industry. And I'm not exaggerating, it's a billion dollar opportunity. And we have an opportunity to help them reduce the toxic waste that they emit into the groundwater. What a great problem. What a great problem to solve. They're coming to us. They want us to work with them. And I approach our management about this, and they say, let's have a meeting. <laughs> well, what do you think? Make some charts. Now my mind is starting to turn to mush. <laughs> this is an expression. If you were to grade people A, B, and C, where A is the best and C is the worst, this is an expression that A's hire A's and B's hire C's. And I was working for B's and C's, and I thought I was going to kill myself. I was getting paid, but I thought I was going to kill myself. On the other hand, there's a pile of potatoes calling to me. So, I did leave slowly out the door a year ago. I ran out the door <laughs> because, because I get to work on these great problems. Now, the, the, again, the point of my talk is that everybody comes from a different situation with a different background. But everyone in this room has skills that would be incredibly useful to a group of people that would be just boring and mundane to another group of people. For example, I know how to send and receive an email. <laughs> Holy crap, that is fantastic. <laughs> to somebody, I actually know a little bit how to use a spreadsheet. And so if there's hundreds of people who want to volunteer to be teachers for a reading program, and there's hundreds of families with kids who want to be in that reading program, I know how to put those together in a way that the other volunteers have no idea, other than like index cards and things like that. So my skills that way in my old job were so what to, wow, that would really help us a lot. At the old job, I could say to my boss, hey boss, there's a grant opportunity for a quarter million dollars. And he'd say, why would you waste your time? I say to the Concern for the Hungry Board, I just worked on a grant and I got us a thousand dollars. And they go, holy, that's fantastic. <laughs> so, other than the pay and the benefits <laughs> and all that other stuff, <laughs> which is nice to have, um, you can't imagine how nice it is to work at a pantry and have someone say, Bless you. My boss at GE never said bless you. He called me a lot, a lot of names. Bless you was never one of them. I fact, if I sneeze, I don't think he ever said bless you. Um, so again, there are, are opportunities. Now, I get um, people of my age group have just or thinking about retirement, and they say, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I say, are you kidding me? <laughs> Here's the list. <laughs> Do you have a day? Um, again, the point of my talk was you have skills. Um, you have wonderful skills, and the community can use you. Um, we saw great slides. I love that song. I don't know if anyone was listening because the music was really loud about how um, I can't spell Schenectady, which I thought was really great. So I, I, I'm guessing most of the people, if you live here, you know how to spell Schenectady because you have to write a return address in your, in your time. So we can all spell Schenectady. This is our community. Um, again, one of the things that I learned, you know, when I lived in the bubble up on the hill, was not two or three miles away. There's an entire community that's struggling every single day, that needs the resources of the people that work up on, on the hill and live out in the suburbs. And the fit, you know, we don't need Republicans or Democrats, we don't need government. We basically just need all us citizens working together. I'm going to swing back and just finish with my little advertisement for Concern for the Hungry, one of the groups I'm working with, but not the only one. Um, the reason I love that program is that, you know, we identify 2,700 people that could use big boxes of food. We don't solve any great problems. 
we're not changing the world. We're just making a family a little happier for, for a couple of days around Thanksgiving time. But the thing that's cool about that program is we get 350 people from the community to come and help. And I think we have, if you can be part of something like that and be part of a community that reaches out, helps everybody, uh, what a great thing. We've heard all about the casino and the tech stuff, and that's all good stuff. But I think underneath all that is still the people. And if the people work together and, and we make this a community, uh, we all can really, really, really make this a, a great community. So thank you. My wife. <laughs> you know, that's a, actually, it was sort of, it was, I'm not sure, that was a serious question, and I want to give it actually a serious answer. Um, I'm really, really lucky. Um, I have the time and the resources to do this. So I have the time and resources to do this a lot. Um, and some people can, but to the extent that you can, uh, an hour, uh, a half an hour, um, you know, a morning, uh, a Saturday, you know, read to, read to a child, help out in a pantry, donate a can of food. Uh, I did an experiment this morning. How many people in the room got the uh, bag for leaving food out for the food drive this morning? Um, so I know, I know my neighborhood got the bags, because we got one, and the fact that we saw some food out um, said that everyone got the bag. But most of our neighbors don't have the bag out. They either thought the garbage bag was a garbage bag, or they don't have a single can of soup they could put in the bag. So I think we need to just re you know, reflect on, on us as members of a community. Um, and uh, so you know, I'm doing a lot of stuff, you know, substituting for, the, you, know, you know, I got a pension, so I'm, I, I'm okay. Um, but we all have a can of soup. That's, that's kind of the point of my talk. <coughs> Um, uh, just, just a question. Uh, I mean, it's great to give people a can of soup or whatever, but could it be more efficient to uh, donate money, and then they can spend that money exactly for what they need? I don't know of um, a single food pantry or soup kitchen that gives out money. Uh, I think most people would recommend that that's not a good idea. But I, what I thought you were going to say is whether or not giving out food actually solves a problem. And the, the global question is that in some ways it doesn't. And um, I think the smarts in this room um, really need to address uh, root causes so that the people that we're serving now, that their grandchildren aren't getting that can of soup, right? And that those grandchildren are getting the tech jobs that we're going to probably hear something about uh, in, in this room. So, so that's really the bigger, bigger problem, bigger problem to solve. I'm sorry, I know we have many, many more questions, but I'm afraid that we're limited for time. Mr. Lewis, first of all, can we have a... <laughs>